one of my favorite features of Swift Concurrency is async let. Uh, that's what we're gonna cover in this, in this video. It basically lets us perform multiple asynchronous methods at the same time. And uh, in the last couple of videos, we learned what tasks are, we learned what the await keyword is. Uh, and as you saw, when you write the await keyword and have a bunch of methods one after another, we are awaiting for each method to finish before performing the next one. Async let is actually letting us perform multiple methods at the same time and then wait for the result of all of those methods together. So it's super handy if you're performing multiple asynchronous methods at the same time. All right, welcome back everyone. We are back in our Xcode project. In the last video, we took a little deep dive into tasks. Uh, we, specifically, we learned about this task modifier, which we are going to then use again in this video. So let's right click the navigator, create a new file. It'll be a Swift UI view and let's call this one async let bootcamp. Go ahead and click create. All right, uh, we're gonna keep this view super simple. Uh, I'm not even gonna create a view model in this video. We're just gonna create in our view an at state private var and we'll call it images and it'll be of type array of UI image and we'll set it equal to a blank array to start. I'm gonna create on the screen here a navigation view. Open the brackets. Let's create a, inside that, let's create a scroll view. And inside that, let's create a lazy V grid. Just because we don't do that very often and lazy V grids are super awesome, super handy. Let's not worry about all this alignment stuff. Let's just go with the columns here. We can see here that the columns need to be an array of grid item. So let's just make some columns up here. We'll say let columns and we'll set it equal to an array of grid item. And I'm gonna use the uh, flexible grid items and then we're just gonna do two of them. We don't need a minimum or a maximum. So I'm just gonna do a grid item and then I'll do comma and another grid item. We'll put our columns in here on the content. We're gonna press enter and the content in the grid, we wanna loop on all of the images. So we're gonna do for each uh, and we're gonna look for the one with the ID key path here that we can use that hash value for each images. ID is going to be backslash dot self. The content will press enter here. Uh, I'm gonna put this, I'm gonna explicitly name this image in and then we're gonna put an image on the screen from a UI image and we'll pass in our image. We will make these resizable, scaled to fit, and we will give them a frame with, I think the columns will do the width for us. So let's just do a height here of uh, maybe 150. Cool, on the scroll view, let's give this a navigation title. Uh, let's call this async let bootcamp. We'll do a quick control command spacebar pull up these emojis and we're having a party tonight so we'll go with that. All right, doesn't look very great. I'm gonna get rid of the word bootcamp and finally uh, we're gonna do on appear, perform an action and just to make sure our grid is working, let's just call uh, self.images.append and we're gonna append a new image. So we'll do a UI image. So we'll do a UI image named system name heart.fill. I'm gonna explicitly unwrap it just for one second. All right, so we have our image here in a grid formation. Get rid of this code. And lastly, we're gonna create a quick little function here to fetch an image. We're gonna say func fetch image. It's going to be an asynchronous function that returns us a UI image and we'll open the brackets. I'm gonna run quickly through this because I've already done it in the last video. Uh, basically, we're gonna do a do catch here. We're gonna call URL session shared dot data uh, from URL and the URL we don't have yet. So let's create up here. We'll say let URL. We'll set it equal to a quick URL from string. Uh, I will explicitly unwrap it. And I'm gonna go into the last video that we have in this series. We're gonna use the same URL that we used in the last video here. And I'm just gonna paste that here. So pixum.photos backslash, let's do 300. Uh, if you are typing this in, make sure you have HTTPS. If you don't have the S in the URL, it will not work. 
Um, this Pixum photo is just a free online photo API. So let's take our URL here, pass it in. We don't need a delegate. And we can see here that this function is returning us data and response. So I'll say let data response equals and we're gonna actually not gonna use the response we'll keep it as an underscore we'll say if let image equals a UI image from data we'll pass in the data if we get that image we will then return the image and we'll say else so if there's a problem getting this image let's just throw a URL error and we'll just say um, bad URL for now all right if we catch this if we if we catch an error we will also throw the error very cool stuff I know guys and we're getting these errors obviously because this is an asynchronous function that throws less less and not least we need to try to get this and it is asynchronous so we need to await the response all right in the on appear we want to, we want to call this fetch image so we will go into a task and then we're going to create a, a do catch statement uh, and the first thing we're going to do in the do is obviously try to get this image so we'll say uh, let image one equals try await fetch image and if we get that image we'll call self dot images dot append image one if we catch an error uh, we could just print out the error or something we're not going to actually use that right now so i'll just leave it blank looks like it is working and this is great what i'm going to do is copy this code and paste it three more times this is going to be image two we're going to append image two image three image three image four and image four now you guys are going to see when i click play here these images are all going to run they're all in the same task uh, but they're going to run serially. So this one, and then this one, and then this one, and then this one. And we're in the same task here, so we have to wait for this one to finish before we can do this one, wait for this one, and so forth. So when I click play here, we can see that the images are all gonna load, but they load in one at a time, one after another. And obviously they still loaded pretty quickly here, but, but you can imagine that if we have all of these things going on in our application, uh, we don't want to run things one after another. We want to run all of these tasks at the exact same time. So the question then becomes, how do we do that? Well, I kind of showed you guys in the last video, what you could do is create multiple tasks. So if I copy this and I paste another task below here, and maybe the first task does our first two images, and our second task does our second three images, uh, we can see that we can see that we improve the speed a little bit because now this task will run and this task will run at the same time but even inside here it's going to run this and then this and so yeah we could further break these out to a whole bunch of different tasks so maybe we have image one here image two uh, but you guys can see already that this is bulking up our code it doesn't seem very efficient and as you probably guess there's a much better way to do this another thing to point out here is when you have all these multiple tasks right you ha then have to manage all of these tasks right so if you want to cancel the tasks you now have a bunch of tasks to cancel if you're you if you're dealing with like tasks and priorities each of these tasks are going to have their own priority that you'd have to set it's just a lot of extra work and there are much better ways to do this so what i'm going to do is undo all of this go back to our single task here what we really want to do here is create a single task where we can then call a bunch of these and have them execute at the exact same time so what we're going to do here uh, as in the title of the file we're going to actually create an async let uh, so an async let is think of it just as a let creating a constant except it's an asynchronous constant so async let and we're going to call this uh, fetch image one and we'll set it equal to uh, fetch image so we'll set it equal to the function that we want to call uh, it's a little bit different than this line right because in this line we have the try and the await kind of signaling we're going to actually make that call and we're going to wait for the response but here there is no await keyword and that's kind of the key takeaway here so what i'm going to do is copy and paste this four times so we'll do all four of these uh, one two three four 
I'll comment all of this out. And what we're going to do is then we want to basically, since we're going to execute all of these at the same time, we can then, instead of waiting for separate times, we want to wait for all four of them together. So I'm going to say let, and the result of the four of these will be image one, image two, image three, image four. And I'm going to set it equal to uh, these four functions. So we'll call um, fetch image one, fetch image two, fetch image three, and fetch image four. Make this a little bigger for you guys. Uh, as you can see, we're going to get these errors, and that's because uh, this expression is asynchronous. We need to mark it with await. You're going to notice here, though, that there's only one await keyword for all four of these versus awaiting four separate times. All right, and last but not least, uh, all of these functions, these, fun these fetch images we know is a function that can throw errors. So we do still need to include that try keyword, right? So we're going to take that try keyword and just put it right here. So we'll try to fetch image one, try to fetch image two, try to fetch image three, and then try to fetch image four. Uh, so we can see here that if all four of these are successful, these all four of these will get set up. And we can see if we hold the option button and click on them, we can see that they are all type UI image. Uh, something to point out here, oftentimes when you're when you're using async let and you're doing multiple queries, uh, if maybe one of them fails, but the other one doesn't, if you're using these hard tries, as soon as one of them throws an error, uh, they're all going to throw an error and we're going to go into that catch block. So if you're doing async let and you are okay maybe with them failing or one of them failing and you still want the other one to return, we can always mark these as optional tries. So then uh, in my query right now, these first two images are going to be optional. So even if they fail, it'll just be nil, whereas these last ones are still going to be a actual UI image. Uh, but if those fail, that try will go down to our catch. Anyway, I'm going to take out the try here. And if we get these four images, we can then call self.images.append contents of, and we can just create an, an array here of image one image one, image two, image three, and image four. I'll put the canvas back on the screen here. Let's click resume. Let's click resume and we should see that all four images pop on the screen at the exact same time. That's awesome. That's because we are, we are executing these four functions basically at the same time. Uh, and then we are waiting for the result of all four at the same time. So so if the first one happens really, really quickly, but maybe the last one takes five seconds, uh, this line of code, we're gonna wait that whole five seconds for all of these to finish and then return back. So you can see here, uh, I think our loading is a little bit faster. It's also a little bit cleaner because the images pop on the screen at once. So, and so there are use cases for this. Now, realistically in your app, if you have some sort of lazy V grid like this, and maybe there's hundreds of items in your lazy V grid, well, you don't want to then write this a hundred times. You also don't want to load all of those cells at the exact same time. So a uh, lazy V grid might not actually be the best example here. Uh, I just wanted to show you loading four items at once. One of the really cool parts about the async let is that these don't actually have to be the same function. They don't even have to be returning the same type. So for example, down here, maybe if I wanted to create another function called fetch title, maybe it's an asynchronous function that returns a string. And let's just return a new title for now. Uh, up here, I could then change any of these queries or so maybe let's just do another one here. Async let fetch title one equals fetch title. I'm going to comment all this code out just for a second, just so we can run with this new example. We can say let uh, maybe image title, and we'll set it equal to await. And the first function is going to be fetch image one. The second will be fetch title one. Uh, and you're going to notice here really quickly that we're getting the error 
that async let call can throw, but does not mark with try. But notice how the red is only underneath the fetch image one and not the fetch title one. That's because fetch image throws, so we have to try to get it. Fetch title does not throw, so we don't actually have to try. So we have our try in here. And then the result of this, we could then use in our app. So we have here uh, an image and we have here a string. So the perfect use case for async let is uh, basically like if you're going to a new screen and you need to make several different maybe fetch requests or asynchronous requests to get the data onto the screen. Maybe you need to load a bunch of posts, maybe you need to load a title, maybe you need to load something from the users, some of the user's settings. You can kind of load all of these diff different things at the same time using async let. Now the big caveat here is, as we kind of started getting into, uh, this is fine when we want to make a couple fetch functions at the exact same time. So we did fetch image one, two, three, and four. But the question then becomes, what if we need to fetch 50 items at once? Do I have to write async let fetch one, two, three, four, five down to 50? And the answer for that is obviously no. Uh, there is a better way to do that and it's called a task group and we're going to look at that actually in the next video. So async let is great for executing multiple asynchronous functions at once and then awaiting the result of all of those functions uh, at the same time. So we can fetch a bunch of different things and then wait for all of the results to come back before we update our screen. Uh, that's a perfect use case for this. But there are again limitations. Uh, it's a lot of code. It's not super scalable. So I find that I use these very often if I need to make like a handful of calls at the exact same time. So uh, if you load the screen and you need to make two, three fetch requests, you can use async let. But if you're going to a situation where you need to fetch maybe 50 of an item or a whole array, well then there's probably other better ways to do it, which we'll get into in the rest of this playlist. All right guys, you guys are starting to become experts on async await and swift concurrency. Uh, we now know all about tasks, and then in this video, we learned how to perform multiple asynchronous functions at the exact same time in a single task. And again, this is handy because we're in a single task, so then uh, if we cancel this one task, we cancel all of these functions. If we wanna give this task a priority, all of these functions will have that priority. There's a lot of benefits by having these into a single task rather than a bunch of separate tasks. Anyway, that's it for this video. We have a lot more to learn. Up next is gonna be task groups where we're gonna look at literally downloading a whole bunch of items at once rather than just four, uh, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. So thank you guys for watching. As always, I'm Nick, this is Swiffle Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.